War, the U.S. military began seeding clouds along the Ho Chi Minh Trail to create floods and wash out North Vietnamese supply routes. It was known as Operation Popeye, and crews flew over 2,000 spray missions. I was told initially by a friend, he said his brother was in the military service. He said when there is these heavy spray days, heavy days when there's lots of persistent contrails to keep his family inside, when they were outside exposed to, to have them go in and take showers. And he couldn't talk about it. He couldn't explain more than that. We have extensive studies that the civilian aircraft, the airliners, were laying plumes that basically dissipated within seconds to two minutes. The military aircraft in the same airspace laid plumes lasting four to eight hours. The weather conditions are the same. The plumes are entirely different. One is civil and one is military. Something is going on. Dave Dickey also believes the U.S. military is behind a lot of the chemtrail activity. He claims to have seen two very suspicious contrails while touring a civilian airport. It's actually the day we spotted two aircraft, um, two KC-135s, and it was uh, call sign Petro-011 and Petro-012. The air traffic controllers were kind of showing us how the uh, tower worked and and uh, they identified these two aircraft as two American military KC-135s. And what we could see was a contrail. We couldn't see the aircraft. It was just amazing to watch the grid patterns that the KC-135s were leaving. People who research chemtrails are convinced there's a conspiracy underway to change the weather. But Rosalind Peterson, Will Thomas, and Dave Dickey have one key burden of proof working against their case. They have no means of capturing the chemical content they claim is so harmful to humans and the environment. The challenge for best evidence will be to devise a number of experiments to do just that. A growing number of people believe that seemingly normal contrails are in fact experimental chemtrails. As such, these compound-laden artificial clouds drift and linger in the sky. Chemtrail believers think it happens for several reasons. This is a deliberate project to slow down catastrophic global warming. I think that some of the programs have to do with military operations. Leading experts who monitor the Earth's atmosphere say jet contrails are nothing more than man-made artificial clouds. And like other clouds, they can affect the climate. Dr. Wayne Evans is an atmospheric scientist. He uses remote sensing devices such as satellites and a spectrometer to study greenhouse gases and the contents and behavior of contrails. He first noticed contrails because they formed at the same high altitudes as cirrus clouds. And you see the two contrails forming amongst the natural cirrus cloud that's moving in. So the contrails are forming cirrus cloud and there's natural cirrus cloud in the same area. Well, most natural clouds actually reflect more sunlight back to space than they supply infrared heat energy towards the Earth. However, cirrus clouds uh, are different. They actually radiate more heat energy than they reflect solar energy back to space. And therefore, cirrus clouds contribute to global warming. Cirrus clouds drift in the same upper atmosphere as contrails. When the humidity and temperature are just right, contrails can themselves become cirrus clouds and have the same warming effect on the climate. Patrick Minnis has specialized in cloud research for 25 years at NASA Langley Research Center. The notion of chemtrails is just ludicrous. I've heard many different ideas of why these contrails are called chemtrails and the reason why they would be occurring and it appears that no one seems to agree on anything uh, except that they're not contrails. They don't really have an explanation for what they are and they're not willing to um, really look at the simplest explanation is that they're contrails. We had found that contrails were producing much more cloud cover than we ever thought they did. This one particular aircraft produced a contrail that was uh, covered an area of 4,000 square kilometers and lingered for six hours. But we also found that uh, there were contrails covering much larger areas and lasting more than 20 hours. 
If contrails are so pervasive and efficient at spreading over large areas of the sky, could scientists use them in experiments that could benefit the environment? You could view contrails as a form of inadvertent weather modification. Deliberate weather modification is an attempt by atmospheric scientists to nudge Mother Nature in the right direction. Using aircraft with spray mechanisms to dispense chemical compounds into the sky, weather can be suppressed or intensified over a limited area for a period of time. Dr. Joseph Golden is a weather modification pioneer. He's been studying weather for the U.S. government for over 40 years. No matter what we do, there will be people that are convinced that something secret is going on. The earliest uh, that I was involved in weather modification research in the United States was with Project Storm Fury, which has a history dating back to the 1960s. The goal of the, of the Storm Fury experiments was to, again, to weaken the hurricane by as much as 10 to 15 percent. Project Storm Fury experimented with a process known as cloud seeding. Aircraft would fly into the eye of hurricanes and spray silver iodide. In theory, the chemical compound would bond with the supercooled moisture in the hurricane and cause it to freeze. A number of complex changes to the eye wall were supposed to take place and weaken the hurricane's destructive speed and power. Eventually, the project failed as costs escalated into the millions of dollars without demonstrating conclusive results. But as technologies advanced, cloud seeding was put to other uses. In the last 10 years, there have been uh, major advances in, uh, in the type of silver iodide that we're using. Terry Krause is a meteorologist and project manager for North Dakota-based Weather Modification Incorporated. The company owns a large fleet of aircraft and conducts cloud seeding projects in more than a dozen countries around the world. The demands for fresh water are increasing. People think nothing of uh, drilling wells and uh, extracting groundwater. Well, now we're trying to use uh, modern technology to extract water that goes unused in this uh, river of water vapor that is passing over us each, uh, each second of the day. A lot of people don't uh, realize that California has been conducting wintertime cloud seeding uh, for uh, almost 50 years to supply the increasing demand for water in California. If chemicals like silver iodide dispensed from aircrafts can make it snow in California and rain on the wheat fields of Indiana, what's to stop atmospheric scientists from engineering the climate on a global scale? Geoengineers look at ways to alter climate systems by introducing chemicals into the upper atmosphere. Scientists recognize that one of the most efficient and economical ways to do this is with the use of high-flying aircraft. We're certainly not going to do anything that might endanger the climate system. Geoengineering has been around for a number of decades, but because the climate system seems to be changing more rapidly than we expected, then we're resurrecting the idea and considering it more seriously. Tom Wigley is at the National Center for Atmospheric Research. 